So we're here at the first call for the day. The customer says that the system's not keeping up with the set point on the thermostat. So we're gonna check it out and see what we got. Okay, turns out she's only having issues in a couple of rooms. We're gonna check out the overall temperature splits on the system, but we're also gonna check for airflow at the ducts. We have spot cooling in this house. We have a couple rooms that are warmer than others. Now, it looks like we have a duct that is about six inches for a room that I'm thinking maybe eight inches. Um, without sizing the entire house, it's kind of hard to see proportionally what size duct we should go to each room. But because we already have an existing duct system, we could up it to an eight inch. And then if we need to choke it down, we can also do that. But the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get a temperature split right here. So this is the return temperature. And the reason is because I'm listening to the lines right here. I don't know if you can get the audio on that, but it sounds like it's kind of bubbling or gurgling. That's an indication that we have a mixture of liquid and vapor getting through this line. And when it hits the metering device in here, it will not meter correctly. And that can also cause spot cooling. A lot of guys don't know that, but once you get the charge right, sometimes the temperature just evens out inside the house pretty nicely. So we're gonna start with that. Actually, we're gonna start with getting the temperature splits and then we'll look at the charge. And right now we have 73 on the return. And I'll get back with you on the supply temp. So we have our temperature split at sitting at about 17 degrees. We got 55 on the supply and 73 on the return. So that would be 17 degrees temperature split. So that's actually pretty good considering the humidity outside. If you were in a dry climate, you, you're looking for 20 degree temperature split, but because we're in Florida, we have about 50% or better humidity that we're looking for about 17 to 18 degree temperature split. So I think the overall airflow is fine unless this charge is not good. So we're gonna go check the charge next. All right, so we're out here checking the charge on the system. I, it sounded like it was low, like there was liquid and vapor getting to the metering device. Also, that was an 18 degree temperature split, not a 17, I think my bath is a little off. So here's the gauges. You wanna make sure that this, my Testo gauges, my 557s, I wanna make sure that I'm set to the correct refrigerant. So my Super D is 17, that's actually not bad at all. So cooling is 2.4, that is really low. This is, so we're gonna get that to about 10. I'm gonna check the specifications on this system, but it should be around 10 for this system. We're gonna bring this up to about eight, and then we're gonna reevaluate. Take it slow, don't go too fast because you could overcharge the system. Now my sub cooling is looking a lot better. My superheat is about seven. It has a thermostatic expansion valve or a TXV on this system. So this is looking pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get our temperature split again. I have a feeling it'll be high. So maybe we just need to get some more air through the system. Anyway, we'll reevaluate the airflow now. I'm installing my Tesso probes, the 605s. We're gonna get accurate temperature splits. And if I have a known CFM on the system, then I can actually see what BTUs the system is putting out. So now I have my testos and they're kind of still evening out. So my return air is 72 degrees roughly and my supply is 55. So that's about 17 degrees, 56, so about 18 degrees. I'm just gonna and it say. says I'm at about 44,000 BTUs, it's a four ton system. I can't see the numbers at all. So I'll like move it a little closer. 
So in conclusion, it looked like it was just a low refrigerant charge that can actually cause spot cooling of the system, like different rooms to have different temperatures. I checked the static pressure of the system, the temperature splits, everything seemed to be in line. If this doesn't handle her bedroom not cooling properly, then we'll go ahead and increase the duct from a 6 to an 8. Uh, it's only like a 10 by 10 room, so it's not huge. She says she's having issues in the evening, not during the morning, uh, which that is an east facing room. So if it was in the morning, I would say it's, it's a heat load issue, but it's not. It's in the evening, there's no sun on that room, and there's very good insulation in that attic. So we're just gonna stick with the charge adjustment for now. I gave her an estimate to replace that duct to increase it to, from a six to an eight if necessary. But I don't like to oversell people. So we'll just see how that goes. Hope you guys learned something. Have a good one.